The city of Brooklyn Center plans to vote Monday on police reform measures. It's a plan that will eventually change how the city responds to police calls with a mental health component, as well as non-moving traffic violations. That vote Monday will impact police in other ways, too. For starters, the city would freeze three vacant police officer positions, meaning they wouldn't be funded in the 2022 budget. It would save the city about $300,000 that it would devote to police reform measures. The city would also increase the lodging tax. That would provide another $50,000. One proposal by the city manager would invest more than a million dollars toward police reform measures that the city originally approved last May. The city manager's proposal is about $350,000 less than what the mayor proposed. Brooklyn Center City Manager Reggie Edwards says the city has 14 unfilled police, police positions. He says the proposal to freeze the three positions was discussed with the police department. A full jury is now seated in the Kim Potter trial, as opening statements will start on Wednesday. The jury seated in the Potter trial is less diverse than the one that convicted former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin of murder and the death of George Floyd. Here's how the jury pool breaks down demographically in the Potter case. Of the 12 jurors and two alternates, 11 are white, two are Asian, and one is black. The gender is split evenly, seven men and seven women. During the trial, Potter's defense team will argue the former officer mistakenly used her firearm instead of her taser when she fatally shot Dante Wright during a traffic stop last April. Potter is charged with first and second degree manslaughter. Starting next week, the state patrol will be donning brand new body cameras. The rollout of the new gear will start with 40 troopers, and from there will increase to more than 600 troopers by next summer. It's the largest deployment of body-worn cameras in Minnesota. It comes at a time when the state patrol is increasingly coming into contact with the public. Last year, there were more than 30,000 crashes. Troopers have over 400,000 interactions with members of the public throughout the year, statewide, with enforcement action and the body-worn cameras give us an opportunity to have an undeniable record of what occurred roadside. On top of wearing body cameras, new camera systems will be placed in every squad car so the camera technology is synced up. Big changes are on the way for a Maple Grove brewery. Omni Brewing Company is renovating and is getting into something new. Reporter Sonia Goins has details on its new business endeavor. So this is You Serious Clark, our first triple IPA we've ever put out beyond the tap room. Fun beer for the holiday season. Omni Brewing Company is crafting beer and bringing in more customers each day. This is like a regular watering hole. I really like the selection they've got and um, I like that it's dog friendly. This is where we canned beer yesterday and where we'll can beer on Tuesday. Thankful for surviving the pandemic's toll, co-owner Zach Ward says things are going so well now the business is adding a new tap room in Rosemont bought four and a half acres of land and are building uh, our next tap room, which will have all 20 beers on tap like we do here. And it just won't be beer. Customers will be able to sip on wine and cider at the new spot. In addition to barrel aging some beer and, and doing some fun special projects with beer there as well. And Omni is also renovating its Maple Grove tap room. We're gonna be knocking out this wall taking the cooler and shrinking it down and creating our own packaging hall. Ward says the makeover and new business venture would not have happened without its loyal customers doing the height of the pandemic. I will never forget the outpouring of support we had in the first shutdown. We have never filled so many crawlers in our life. That show of support gives me goosebumps just talking about it right now. The owners say they're always trying to reinvent themselves and create new experiences for craft beer connoisseurs. Trying to bring people together over a few good beverages and find new and creative ways to do that. That's the joy. That's what it's all about. In Maple Grove, Sonia Goins, CCX News. Omni is hosting what they call a hibernation party on December 18th. It will feature limited edition beers as well as new growlers. Robbinsdale bids farewell to a well-known city musician. Mike Serber led the Robbinsdale City Band for one last time Thursday night. Nina Bupasivan has the story. 
For Robbinsdale City Band Director Mike Server, this year's holiday concert marks the end of an era. It has been a real trip, a real honor for me uh, to direct this group. It's the first indoor concert in two years for the band. This is also where I had my first concert, so it's a special way of capping off my career with the Robbinsdale City Band. A night of musical classics, and one last time to honor a leader who lived out his dream for the past several decades. I've always wanted to be in the Ramsdell City Band ever since I was a little kid. Serber was only 13 years old when he joined the city band. I've always had a real interest in music, and my degree is in music education. And I, I taught in the schools for, for a few years. And I've always loved music, and I've always loved directing music leading him to travel the country and play all over the metro. But it's the group itself he'll miss the most. We treat each other like family. We, we share our joys in life. We share our sorrows in life. Ray Johannick is the new band director who hopes to carry on Serber's legacy. The first thing I really want to do is try to recruit more young people. Um, the band has this really long legacy and I, and I want to continue that. But for now, just one last hurrah for server. Nina Bupasavan, CCX News. We'll start our CCX football all-area offense with a talented trio of quarterbacks. Cooper's number seven, Joe Russell, was a three-year starter and broke most of the Hawks' career passing marks. This fall, he threw for 2,036 yards with 28 touchdowns and was Section 5 MVP while leading the Hawks to their first state semifinal. Now throws and it's complete. Number nine, Jacob Kilzer of Maple Grove had a great junior season as he led the Crimson to their first prep bowl. Kilzer threw for 1,457 yards and 14 TDs with just two interceptions. He also rushed for 631 yards and 14 TDs. Number three, Marcus Freeman of Park Center shined in his senior season for the resurgent Pirates. Freeman passed for 1,891 yards and 23 TDs and was Twin City Green most valuable player. Down the middle of the field and it's a completion. Our running backs include number three, Derek Jamison of Maple Grove. Oh, breaks the tackle, he's in the open. Jamison had a breakthrough senior season, rushing for 1,591 yards while averaging 9.6 per carry with 23 touchdowns. He's a Mr. Football finalist. And he's going to go for a touchdown. Number 11, Julian Alfaro Diedrich of Wyzetta switched from receiver to running back this fall and had a great impact. Bounces it outside, slips a tackle, Diedrich to the end zone. He rushed for 1117 yards and 13 touchdowns while also catching 21 passes. Number six, Camden Royal of Cooper was the Hawks offensive MVP, rushing for 1415 yards and 15 touchdowns. He also caught 20 passes and has multiple scholarship offers. And that'll spring him for the touchdown. Number seven, Micah Hoban of Park Center rounds out our backs. Hoban ran for 1,017 yards and 18 TDs, averaging 6.8 per carry. The versatile Hoban had 22 TDs total and has FCS and D2 college interest. Our wide receivers include Cooper's number four, David Connors. There's tip, and oh. he's got it. Connors had a breakout senior season with 41 catches for 962 yards and 13 TDs. He was team <laughs> MVP Fates and a first team all Metro Connor, pick. Connors will play at Illinois Connors State. Number 15, Drew Berkland of Wyzetta is also a first team all Metro pick. But that's Berkland, it's a touchdown. Switch from defense to offense this season, Berkland had 55 catches for 722 yards and seven touchdowns. Breaks a tackle and he is in for the touchdown. Number one, Peyton Newburn of Armstrong was a big play threat for the Falcons. Newburn caught 38 passes for 750 yards with 10 touchdowns. He was Falcons offensive MVP. Our tight end is number four, Maple Grove Jr. Sam Peters. Over the middle, Sam Peters is open! Peters is a solid blocker who caught four touchdown passes this season. At 6'5", he's drawing Division I interest. Our offensive line includes number 77 tackle Jerome Williams of Osseo. 
The 6'5", 285-pound junior was Offensive Lineman of the Year in the Metro Maroon North and earned second-team All-Metro honors. He has several Power 5 college offers. Number 77, Kellen Kopp of Park Center was also a second-team All-Metro choice. The 6'3", 225-pound senior was Twin City Green Offensive Lineman of the Year. Number 65, Brett Kelsenberg of Wyzetta was a first-team All-Metro selection. The 6'5", 285-pound senior is a powerful blocker who is committed to the University of North Dakota. Number 72, Will Resman of Maple Grove is a 6'5", 285-pound tackle who is the best lineman for the Crimson. A good puller, watch the great block Resman had versus Woodbury. Just pancake. Rounding out the line is Cooper center number 55, Elijah Anna. The tenacious Anna earned all district honors while anchoring the line for a potent offense. Our kicker is Maple Grove's number 90, Connor Fournier. The junior made 59 extra points this season and also nailed six field goals with a long of 42 yards. A special group, the CCX All-Area Offense.